I saw this week yet again another preacher who's calling for, you know, death to the gay community and all this. And I sat there, and folks, I'm telling you, when I see this stuff online, I think to myself, I hope you do it at least once. God forgive me. I hope the person he does is saved. But I hope you kill at least one gay person in the name of the law. I hope you do. Because the minute you do, you will condemn yourself to hell for eternity. The minute he does, he will literally condemn himself to hell for eternity. Unless he repents of that. Unless he wakes up and realizes that he ought not to have done that. The Word of God said that to be guilty of one point of the law is to be guilty of all the law. It also tells us that the minute you rely upon the law for righteousness, the grace of God is no longer of any effect to you. And the death of Jesus Christ on the cross no longer applies to you. That's what the Bible teaches. The minute you start relying on the law, the minute any Christian, so-called, tries to impose a penalty based on the Old Testament law, he is confessing that he believes that keeping the law is essential to salvation. That's what he's saying. The minute you try to apply a penalty from the Old Testament law, you immediately are confessing that you believe keeping the law is essential to one's salvation. The minute you have done that, then you become bound to keep every single point of the law. That includes ceremonial issues, that includes dietary issues. That includes your attire, the clothing that you wear, how you wear your hair, everything. And if there's some ignoramus watching me right now on, online and you don't believe me, you just might want to look at your Bible a little closer because nowhere in the New Testament message of grace is the killing of anyone for any transgression or perceived sin, endorsed, promoted, or encouraged. As a matter of fact, when Jesus had gone through one town and they didn't receive him very well, and they wouldn't extend to him any hospitality, if you remember, uh, James and John, the sons of thunder, wanted to call down fire from heaven to destroy them for not being hospitable. Sound familiar, those of you that don't understand what the true sins of Sodom were? They wanted to bring down the same judgment on that city that Sodom had experienced. And guess what? For the same identical reasons. They had not extended uh, hospitality. And what did the Lord say? The Lord said, I have not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Not only did he say that, Lisa, but he said, what manner of spirit are ye? He said, what spirit are you operating under? Because it sure isn't God if you're calling for the destruction of of human lives. Do you hear what I'm telling you? So when you see this foolishness online and you see this foolishness on television and you hear this stupidity from some of these ignoramus preachers and I'm, you know, people get mad at me because I call people names. Jesus said, you snakes in the grass, you hypocrites. Didn't he? Well, these foolish people that are calling for death to, to members of the LGBT community, all they're demonstrating is they're as stupid as a brick. And they have no concept of the Word of God whatsoever. They have no clue in the world what the Bible really says about anything, especially grace 
especially the law. And those two things I've told you many, many times do not get in the same bed. You cannot be married to the law and be married to grace at the same time. One of them has to be dead. Not divorced from. Dead. So either the law is dead to you and you're living in grace, or the law is alive to you and you are devoid of grace. That's the only way it works.